to Joygasm, where we forget our troubles and welcome, and always be thankful for video games, movies, and pop culture. I'm Russ, Xbox Live Toaster 360, and with me is my little leprechaun Steve, Xbox Live Steveovich, as we find our proverbial pot of gold in the form of episode 63 today, March 17th, 2018. To get the most out of Joygasm, follow us on your social media of choice and YouTube. Just do a search for Joygasm TV. In addition to iTunes and Android, you can listen to our podcast on TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, and SoundCloud.com slash Joygasm TV. Also, for exclusive access to some sweet goodies, check us out at Patreon.com slash Joygasm. And no matter which platform you use to enjoy the show, please show us some love, because it's always good to have some love, especially from the Irish. We have so much much to share a pint over. Gaming news includes more Overwatch League sanctions, Narcos video game announced, Microsoft's Xbox press conference date, a special guest joining the ranks of Soul Calibur 6, a new Tomb Raider game coming out this year, and more. Movie news includes John Williams parting way with Star Wars, Black Panther continuing box office success, House of Cards final season, and AMC hosting a Marvel Cinematic Universe Marathon. This particular episode, we do not have any kind of topic of the day. Which is okay, because we're Irish. <laughs> or Scottish, what the two? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what accent that was. I don't, need, I don't even know. I don't know. Yeah, you always have to be like a charms. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was going to laugh when I say that. <laughs> they are me, they're like charms. Yeah, that was kind of a completely bastardized version of the Irish accent. I guess we will uh, river dance our way through this episode, bro. Absolutely. Well, you know, I thought it was fitting <laughs> considering it is, in fact, St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to do a little Irish tap dancing underneath this table with my feet. <laughs> do, do a little jig, a little Irish jig. <laughs> That's right. My goodness. I actually wore green yesterday, which was a day early, obviously. Mm. But I was in the spirit of things, and I wanted to wear green while I was at work. Came back, and I don't think... Well, actually, no, no. I thought I had green on my shoes, but I, alas, mm. I do not. I remember once I was working at a bank, and one of our, our vendors came in and make a deposit, and I was making casual conversation, and I said, hey... You're not wearing any green. And she looked at me and she was like, she was a, a taller woman. Mm-hmm. She was about six, five, six, seven, like tall. And she looked down what, on did me. Did you say five, six, or five, seven? Or no, six, or, five? Uh, uh, six, six, five, or six, seven. I was going to say, <laughs> she was tall. Five, yeah, six, she, five, yeah, seven. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Steve. <laughs> You're a wheelie <laughs> man. Well, when you're not dwarf as myself, you <laughs> look up at a lot of people. Uh, so, anyway. She looked down on me from uh, her height mm-hmm. as I was counting all the dollar bills that she was depositing. From her ivory tower. Right. And looked down at me and a, with a small grin on her face said, well, I'm wearing green underwear. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just, uh, um, here's your deposit receipt. Have a nice day. I don't want to be unprofessional. <laughs> me too, movement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man so how have you been well i have a, a little story for you i was at work another work story another work caught story. up though as in this last week uh the office we received a message that somebody uh was interested in one of our services one of our products and so my associate called back and i was listening in on the conversation he goes Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, we can call you back out. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so it's fine. And I looked at him and I said, why? What, what, what happened with that? And he says, oh, I was in some competition. I don't know. Whatever. I went, oh, what kind of competition? Oh, I was just over something. I don't know. Whatever it was. I'm like, over what? She goes, yeah. Oh, wait, you know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no. Yes, man. Uh-huh. Uh, so he's like, what is it? <laughs> Them all about oh, it. <laughs> Took it about 15 minutes out of the work day. Okay, guys, let me tell you about this, okay? <laughs> this is what's up. Anyhow, and they, they, everybody was interested for about uh, 
30 seconds. And then we all went back to work. Mm -hmm. anyway, but it was kind of fun. Well, at least you built awareness. Time. That's right. Perhaps we'll get some converts out of it. That's right. What have you been playing, Steve? Well, speaking of which, uh, I have just been playing the regular Russ. Actually, I, I'm thinking I might trade in a few games to get some. I remember else. you mentioned you know, that on a previous yeah. episode. I uh, I was looking up values that the games are worth so I can get some credit and get something else. I haven't done it yet, but um, uh, that was one of the things I was supposed to do today, actually. Mm -hmm. However, I tricked my body into thinking it was earlier than it actually was. I mean, it was very much later in the day, and much of the day was wasted. Wasted was it? Wasted it was. So that uh, that's gonna have to uh, that's gonna have to wait. I see. But you already know what I've been watching. Actually, I I have yet to tell you. I'm almost finished with the latest season of House of Cards. Now, is that season five? Yes. Yes. And I'm telling you, the uh, the stuff, Russ, is about to hit the fan. Ooh, yeah. It always seems like it's right there every Man, single season. Everybody is about to get schlocked. With the stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, the pressure is building. What about you? Well, let me think about this for just a second. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> a half a second, I have <laughs> Competitive Overwatch has been at the forefront of my noodle. And mm. so that, that is the one that does all the thinking at the top of the shoulders and neck. Your noodle, your mound of spaghetti? Yes, the mount of spaghetti that is tossed around with the, I don't know, marinara yeah, well, sauce, yeah. it's whatever. Marinara. Basically, yeah. it's been on my brain. And um, no, I've been getting into more and more of... <laughs> it's been on my <laughs> meatball <laughs> <laughs> with tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it's been on my cannoli. <laughs> what? No. Uh... No, I've been trying to get more engaged with the competitive side of things with Overwatch. And the reason why is that in the past, I've actually kind of avoided the competitive play just because you have. I would get too stressed out. You would. I would be too psyched out. Indeed. And instead, I would just kind of hang out in the, the quick play and arcade areas. Right. Just because I knew none of my performance would actually be recorded. And I tell you, man, watching that number go up and especially go down. It, uh, it, it really was pulling a number on me, but I think I've reached a point now where I just, you know, I still care about it, but I don't care about it enough to have it <laughs> just drastically affect my mood. I still get frustrated when I get placed on a team that has really no coordination or skill sets. It, it's actually kind of surprising on uh, some of, you know, some of the teams that we get paired up with. But luckily, that doesn't always happen. That's not always the case. And so I've been enjoying myself more and more in that. And I've been finding that I've just been clicking over there with the intent of having a goal to try and get to the gold tier. Every time I play, I'm always stuck in the silver tier. And I've actually listened to some, some pros on YouTube talk about how when you're in the silver area, like you're copper, silver, even gold, it can be frustrating because you don't have players who really play together as a team. Everyone kind of breaks off and becomes their own maverick and does their own thing. You have, you have very brief instances of it happening, but overall it just becomes very frustrating because you're just trying to, to actually play the game and not goof off and that sort of thing. I hear that, Russ. Well, actually, <clears> too, <throat> uh, there is something to be said for playing arcade because you get extra loot boxes. And you have Capture the Flag and all these special game modes. Well, in that, yes, absolutely. And when Capture the Flag is available, and especially the competitive Capture the Flag, that is probably my That's favorite game. Pretty mode. friggin' awesome, actually. So, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see when that will come back because I will definitely pick that up and play. But I, like I said, playing the competitive mode actually is fun. It's just, man, like when you're going through the placement process, it to, to me, I put much more weight on that just because it's harder to move up in the ranks. Like once you get placed, then every match that you beat, that you win, you only get moved by a few notches. It's not like all of a sudden you're like having this big 
change up, so to speak. And so as a result, it's like you're just you're grinding your way to, to this, this next tier. And you may not even see that because every time you lose, then you get penalized for that and your, your points drop a bit more. Sure. So. But at it, the same time, it's a game. It's supposed to be fun. And at the end of like the whole competitive season, it starts over anyway. You're right, Steve. You know what I'm saying? You are absolutely correct. Thank you. I got to say, you know, you, you've, you've helped me kind of let go of some of that. So, uh, yeah. Why? Well, Thank to, you. There had to be some way to get you to stop yelling in my ear, so to speak, through the, uh, the, the little speaker, the headset. Yes. Yeah. Rush, rush, calm down. It's it's just a game. <laughs> okay, turn you down. Okay, turn you down. To pull out the swear jar. <laughs> okay, put a penny in the jar, rush in the piggy bank. Oh, that's a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing I've noticed this week that came as a bit of a, a shock was that <laughs> Stephen Hawking died. Yeah, he was seventy-six years old, and man, again, it, that type of passing just just really brings back to the forefront the fact that there are several just really well-known people who are passing away over the past year or two it's just amazing how they're, they're just these these people who we've known since we've been kids i mean we, we've they've always been around in the public eye and having different types of contributions toward mankind and uh just the the Society in general, whether it be a, of a of artistic talent or a scientific, medical, whatever it is. And so it was interesting to do a little bit of reading. I have to fully give a disclosure regarding my understanding of Stephen Hawking. I don't really know all that much about what his speciality is. I was, I was reading that he is an expert in, uh, in physicist, I, I believe mm -hmm. is what it is. Um, but beyond that, I don't really know a ton about some of his other findings. There was actually a movie that came out recently that looked pretty interesting where um, one of the actors was, was portraying Stephen Hawking back when he was younger, before um, he was in a wheelchair. And then I think it went into more of that, that part of his life as well. So I think we can all expect there to be one or two movies coming out. And, you know, if nothing less, definitely a documentary. That's that's all. Chrono be chronological of his life and achievements and whatnot. I mean, you can you 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 know something's gonna come out. Yeah, yeah. And I was reading again. I, I I can't remember exactly what the details are, but I believe he discovered something about black holes. Where like, I think there is some sort of radiation or heat or something that is emitted off of black holes, which plays an integral part to how they work or something to that, to that effect. I'll, I'll have to read again, but it, it definitely, I mean, it sounded pretty interesting. Apparently that has actually really contributed a lot to just scientists as they explore just, just the phenomenon of black holes and just how, how it affects the rest of the, the universe. It has contributed to, uh, science. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell that this is an area. My brain just kind of <laughs> peters out. But at the same time, even though uh, my brain does that, I, I am smart enough to realize that uh, the contributions that man has made has been very special and very important. So a big thank you to you, good sir, and may he rest in peace. Indeed. Now, we watched Darkest Hour mm. earlier this week. Good movie. With Gary Oldman as Winston Churchill. Fantastic. And that is one of those types of movie dramas where there's really not any action. It's right. just, it's, it is drama in the very purest sense of that word. And one of the things I got to say about Gary Oldman, I'm a huge Gary Oldman fan. But with him looking, I mean, he looked uncannily like Winston Churchill. Yeah, he owned it. But the giveaway is his voice. Gary Oldman has a very <laughs> distinct sound to his voice. And so even though he looked just like Winston Churchill, like when, especially when he started to get into the, some of those scenes where he was getting aggravated or upset or something, 
it it was just it was hard to like continue keeping that that illusion of Winston Churchill because at that point it's like wait Winston Churchill sounds like Gary Oldman yeah yeah especially I yeah when he got agitated or yelled yeah that's mm-hmm. kind of came out a little bit but tremendously acted it was really neat to be able to see some of the details that I was not aware of with with regards to what the politics were like within his party and the opposing party and then how he became prime minister and all that. I, I, I would say I, I recommend checking it out. I think people would dig it. I think the uh, cinematography, Russ. Uh, cinematography, uh, indeed. Very, very well done. There were many beautiful shots. Well, with, with it was in Parliament. Everyone's waving around their papers. And you, mm-hmm. know, you, have, you have some some shafts of sunlight beaming through the windows. That would be called a volumetric lighting <clears throat> Whatever, Russ. Hey, um, so, <laughs> or <laughs> that's Steve's uh, version of my science. <laughs> you know, and you see stuff coming through these like panes of light. Uh, what is it? Anyhow, to me, it's just lighting, Russ. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, uh, or it could have just been the backdrop of England with the the green trees and the old wood and the old vehicles and whatnot. I, I there was, I I really enjoyed the movie. I did. And a matter of fact, I ended up telling you, this is what we should have watched before we watched Dunkirk. True. I mean, that, th- this movie was like the segue into Dunkirk. Well, it, it wasn't like, it was a segue from Dunkirk. This is, Dunkirk was everything from home beyond. And this was what was happening at home before going beyond. Mm-hmm. A prequel. Maybe, if you will. Even though it wasn't a prequel, but I mean, it kind of was. I liked how there was mention of the Dunkirk situation in this film. Yeah. And I, I appreciated how they they didn't just gloss over it, that they actually were talking about what difficult decisions Winston Churchill had to make, especially with that, well, for those of you who have not seen it, I will <laughs> not spoil it for you, but... Uh, there is a part of history where he had to make a difficult decision in order to save the lives of 300,000 so, um, British soldiers. So Sometimes what's popular isn't exactly what's right. Indeed. Now, I did play some more Uncharted 4. I am continuing to make my way through that game. Oh, right. We were talking about uh, what you've been doing. I forgot about that, Russ. I, got, I was lost in, in uh, Darkest Tower. That's there. okay. That's okay. Onward. And upward. So I'm making my way through that, but I got to tell you, Steve, the biggest thing for the, for me this weekend really is the latest Avengers Infinity War trailer. Mm-hmm. As it was for uh, quite a few people. Yes. I, I have friends on Facebook who said, oh man, I shared that on my wall like four times. Well, I, I know that I've already seen it. I couldn't help myself. And then I know that you have already seen it. it was, Just once though. Okay. <laughs> I've seen it like five times already. <laughs> <laughs> However, I say we watch it right now. I knew you would, Rose. That's why I only watched it once, so I could be more excited when you play it. The entire time I knew him, he only ever had one goal. To wipe out half the universe. If he gets all the infinity stones, he can do it with the snap of his fingers. Just like that. Tell me his name again. Thanos. We got one advantage. He's coming to us. We have what Thanos wants, so that's what we use. Let's talk about this plan of yours. I think it's good, except it sucks. So let me do the plan, and that way it might be really good. Wow. Perfectly balanced. As 
all things should be. Ah! I hope they remember you. I'm Peter, by the way. Thoughts are strange. Oh, I'm using your made-up names. Then I am Spider-Man. <laughs> that looks so good. I know that. I, I think it looks like it's actually happening in Wakanda, which would almost make sense because uh-huh. that's where the last Marvel movie left off. It looks like it, it, it takes place in Wakanda and pl- and, and uh, what is it? What's Thor's place? Um, his realm. His uh, well, his place got destroyed. Remember? Yeah. Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. happens. You know, pay attention, Steve. Well, that's what happens. We have like eighteen to twenty Marvel movies. You got to keep track <laughs> of. Golly, <laughs> kind of start to all fade together. <laughs> uh huh. Whatever. Uh huh. Earth is still attention. there. <laughs> You should lay off the buttered popcorn next time. I think it's getting in your brain. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, uh, Thor's home is currently no more, Steve. If you recall, he and his people uh, had to take one of those refugee ships. Oh, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. That trailer, seriously, just... I get chills. I've now I've seen it like six times. I get chills every time I see that. It's just perfect. The whole thing is just absolutely perfect. L- looking at all those characters in there, I, I honestly think I think that's going to be the highest grossing film of the year, bar none. It's going to have quite the competition, Ross. <laughs> if all the fans who have seen Black Panther watch this Avengers movie, then yeah, for sure. I think I think it's going to be a blowout. I think that this is the the pinnacle of what they've been working towards this entire time. And we've talked about this when we saw the first trailer for the Avengers Infinity War. Man, this thing, I, I was just floored when I saw it yesterday. I think it was yesterday, actually. It was the day it came out. It was just amazing. Definitely looks good, Russ. What I'm, what I'm hoping they don't do. There, there is there are some funny parts in there with Peter Parker... And I and I think it's very very witty and and smart. I think you're very witty and smart. I am. You'd be correct. And there and with um, ah, Chris Pratt, uh, uh, Star Lord. Uh, Steve, that would I be mean, the I'm, Guardians of the Galaxy. Steve, uh, not just his character. Star Lord, and just yes. his character. I mean, he was he was kind of funny there, and and he's supposed kind of to, funny. That he, was awesome. He was funny. I'm giving it to you. He was funny. But what I don't want them to do is to have every character kind of have their awkward humor moment. They're not going to each have I, their I, awkward I, humor I moment. I hope that does not happen. I'm just saying I hope they don't put it towards that because the film looks very, very serious. It's going to be you know, pretty ball-busting, beat them up, mm-hmm. show down. Someone might, uh, you know, Thanos the bucket, Russ. is not someone to be trifled with in the very least. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't think any of the Marvel villains uh, could be trifled with. Well, us. you know, after watching Age of Ultron, I believe Ultron could have been trifled with. <laughs> but no, I th- actually, speaking of Age of Ultron, I think that this is definitely the redemption from... Not not that Age of Ultron was bad. It was, I mean, it was good. It just wasn't on the same level as the first Avengers movie. But this third one, I'm just like, oh, man. Like, just it's every shot you see is like this amazing spectacle of a comic book come to life. I'm going to expect to see something about the the government going, you know what we, we decision we made during Civil War? Sorry about that. We'll rip up everyone's contract. You can fight evil. You won't get arrested. Big Brother's not looking over you anymore. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, man. And we have to get tickets because tickets are on sale now. Are we seeing it in IMAX? We oh. should just do it at the end of the show. Are we seeing it in IMAX or are we singing it? Singing, singing, singing it? Yeah, we'll, we'll sing it. I'll eight. sing it all day long, Steve. So we're seeing it regular or IMAX, Russ? We're seeing it in IMAX, Steve. As okay. if you had to ask. I had to ask. This is a event hmm. of events. Yes, it is. Maybe we should get some people together to go see it with us. Hmm? I think it'd be a good idea. I think that'd be a great idea. <clears throat> I think it, it, it's the type of movie where... Man, I just. 
at this point, I think I would be shocked if I came out of the theater and thinking that it sucked. I think that just the, the Russo brothers who are behind it, who are directing it, they're the ones who did Winter Soldier and Civil War. I mean, that plus the crew, the, just the, the whole, gosh, it's, just, it's crazy looking at the characters, like just, just how they have been able to bring all of these characters from different movie series together into one movie. We've said this time and time again, and I'm going to say it again. The, the, the whole <laughs> notion more. is of just being alive during this time. I mean, I was talking to some friends yesterday about how this is one of those defining moments that when I become a grandparent, I'll be able to tell my grandkids about the day that I got to go to the theater and watch Avengers Infinity War, seeing all of these comic book characters come together coalesce and not only for just one movie it's a two-parter oh <laughs> so <sighs> someone's kicking the bucket i know it i'm telling you man it's just my 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 joygasm meter it has reached a fevered pitch with this gym you this just jewel keep it, you just keep it controlled ross okay i'm trying to steve you know uh, Chadwick, uh, Bos- Bosman. Ha- I'm, I think I-, I started thinking, you mean Bozeman, Bozeman, Bosman, Bo- Chadwick, Bozeman, Steve, Bozeman, Bosman, O S E M A N. Anyway, they were filming, although the- he laid it like a boss man. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. I wonder how much time. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Get this thought out one way or the other. <laughs> interrupting me. I never mentioned that's a pet peeve. Oh yeah, I have. Old man Perkins over here. Yeah, and again, another. Uh, I'll take another deep breath, and you will start interrupting me. Go ahead, me. Steve. Go ahead. What, what's on your mind? So him working on this Avengers movie as well as the Black Panther movie. I wonder how much time he spent away from home and in work. The <laughs> guy needs some time off for crying out loud. Well, I think he'll get it. I think right now he is very excited to be a part of such a huge franchise as well as just not one, but two of the biggest movies of the year. I think that his career has been on an upward trend over the last, I'd say, three to four years. Mm -hmm. And if I was him, I wouldn't be complaining in the slightest. I would be absolutely on top of the world. I'd be like, yeah. Let's do this again and again and again. Oh, but the next time you're adding another comma. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you're adding another digit to my contract. Absolutely. And you know, they probably have something like that worked out. Where if it actually, I hope that he had something in his contract where based on the certain sales numbers that Black Panther has received, maybe he was able to get some bonus checks, kickbacks. Ah, he would be better. Or else his agent better be working overtime without any time off saying, hey, everyone, I mean, the director and uh, Chadwick have both been getting a ton of press saying, man, you got, you guys made a movie. It wasn't just like the director who made it. It was, it was both the actor and the director that are getting pretty much equal recognition. It's very, very true. All right. Well, enough salivating and drooling over that particular trailer because I could talk about that for a long time. So long, in fact, it would probably drive my sibling over here absolutely nuts. It would. But I'm going to save you that. Instead, we're going to segue into some Overwatch news. Cheers, love! The cavalry's here! Winston Report. Justice reigns from above. Junkrat primed and ready. Lucio coming at you. Form up on the payload. Move it out. Nerf this. <laughs> Come out and face me. I am ready to revive you. All those characters are near and dear to my heart. Aren't they to you, Steve? They are, Russ. Just every time I hear one of those voices, puts a smile on my face. Indeed. Actually, when Tracer comes on, I love Tracer's voice, but I hate being uh, offed by Tracer so much in the game. You hate being accosted by Tracer? Yes. Understandable. So to kick things off here, Overwatch League announces sanctions against three players and one coach, which is pretty interesting, I must say. 
Dallas Fuels Felix, if you recall who that was, the XQC player. Uh, well, there's there's kind of a two-parter to this. The first part is that uh, he was suspended for four matches in order to pay a $4,000 fine for using an emote in a racially disparaging manner on the league stream and on social media, along with you know, using disparaging language against Overwatch League casters and fellow players on social media and on his personal stream. Interesting. Now, as you recall, Steve, this is not the first ban imposed upon uh, XQC. Right. <sighs> first time was when he used a homophobic slur against a member of the Houston Outlaws, which is your team, team you're <laughs> rooting for. Uh, and the Dallas Fuel then upped his punishment by suspending him for the remainder of the season. Now, uh, I'm going to see if I can pronounce this right. Timu Taimu Ketutin? Ketunin. Ketunin. We'll go with that. Who about actually is another Dallas Fuel player, was fined $1,000 for anti-gay slurs on his personal stream. Ted Silkthread Wang, a player for the Los Angeles Valiant, was also hit with a $1,000 fine for a, for account sharing. I'm not even sure really what they mean by account sharing. Maybe somebody was using his Twitch profile or playing under his name. That's interesting. Now, the Overwatch League also announced that Taeyong, which which I guess his nickname is Tyrong Kim, the head coach for the Houston Outlaws, your team once again, Steve, getting into hot water, <laughs> was issued a formal <laughs> warning after sharing an offensive meme on Twitter. The league said it considered Tyrong's unprompted public apology <laughs> and a $1,000 donation to the Hiroshima Peace Culture Foundation when deciding on Tyrong's punishment. So a lot of... Uh, a lot of drama going on between the Houston Outlaws and the, the Dallas Fuel there. Yeah, when hot, when tempers flare, Russ, uh, sometimes you say things or do things you regret. In announcing the sanctions, the Overwatch League noted that it is committed to building a community around the Overwatch League that is welcoming and inclusive for all players and fans, and we hope that these disciplinary actions demonstrate our seriousness in that endeavor, end quote. So it's, I think it's just a continuation of what we as gamers experience for about as, as long as the online gaming got launched, really. <laughs> I mean, you just have people who normally are in their, their parents' basements or, or are kind of more of the folks who you don't come across and interact with on a daily basis. And it's given them a, a, both a, a visual and, and audio platform to expel certain uh insults or offensive things to the rest of us. <laughs> well, I think when you're getting paid by a blizzard, then they, uh, they expect level of conduct, Russ, higher than if you're just uh, a regular dude playing the game. Mm. Let your temper flare. Now, the, I, I mentioned earlier that that was part one for XQC. Um, now, the part two section of that is that Dallas Fuel has released... Felix XQC Lingle, um, meaning I uh, he's fired. <laughs> meaning he got the boot. Uh, yeah, it says they have a. I have a quote here. There are few players out there who have achieved as much success as, in as short a time as Felix has in the competitive Overwatch. Said Fuel owner Mike Rufail in a statement. Ultimately, it was in the best interest of our organization and Felix to part ways before the expiration of his contract. No one wants to see Felix succeed more than we do, and we believe he has a bright future ahead of him. I want to thank him for his time and the passion he brought to the Dallas Fuel, end quote. <laughs> passion is... Hello, 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 yeah, I, I do believe it's his passion that got him in trouble in the first place. <laughs> Due to his most recent suspension, Lingle would not have been able to compete or practice with the Fuel for the remainder of Stage 2 of the Overwatch League. And I have one more quote here. It says, our focus is to field a roster with players that are available to help the Dallas Fuel succeed now and in the future. Releasing Felix today allows us the flexibility to make additional signings during the league transfer window and allows Felix to pursue other opportunities this season and on stream. That is incredibly politically correct of them to say that, but mm -hmm. basically he became too much of a liability because yeah. uh, he was not acting in a sportsmanlike manner. Hmm. In more words or less, yeah. Yeah, in so many words. 
So something a bit more positive regarding Overwatch is that Brigitte will soon be available for quick play and competitive play. Nice. I don't know if you heard about this already, Steve. I did. Oh. Well, Blizzard announced that she will... Do you know what day she's going to be available? No, I don't. <laughs> I have a little bit of information he doesn't know, folks. He will be... Or he will be... She! <coughs> that S was <coughs> silent. <coughs> she will be available to play on March 20th for all players. Oh, that's coming up quick. You should put that in your calendar, yeah. Steve. So, yeah. I don't know. Pretty, pretty cool, I must say, in all things. That's on a Tuesday. Is it on Tuesday? It's on a Tuesday. My goodness. Overwatch does a lot of things on Tuesdays. They like Tuesday. Do they like Tuesday? They like Tuesday. Well, wow. interesting. <laughs> all right, so let's get into some gaming news. Now, this one's a bit of a doozy, Steve. I think you're going to like it. I do like doozies. Narcos video game announced. What? Curve Digital has signed a deal with Narcos producer Gamont to make a video game adaption based on in the hit show. It will be released next year for PC and console. What do you think about that, Ice Game? I don't know, Russ. Oh, no. He's getting uh, critical, folks. I don't know about that, Russ. I have a quote for you. We are looking forward to creating a game that matches the fantastic storyline and gritty action of the Netflix series, says Kuju's studio head, Brindley Gibson. Quote, we are tremendously excited and have some amazing gameplay elements in the works that will please both fans of the show and gamers, end quote. I can see it being kind of like a, uh, you, know how, you know how they're making cyberpunk? Yes, I do. I think if they do it in that kind of platform and controlling Agent Pena, maybe that could work. I don't know. Maybe. What maybe. if, the, you know, they could get creative. I was thinking about how, like, what if they did, like, a split story where, like, part of the time you're playing the agent and then the other part of the time you're playing it's, like, Pablo Escobar or something? Uh, no, oh, Russ. man. I don't think so. Oh, man. I don't think so. <laughs> Moving right along, E3 2018. Microsoft announces press conference date and new venue. The Xbox E3 2018 briefing will be held on June 10th at 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern time, 9 p.m. UK. And actually, it will technically be June 11th at 8 a.m. in Australia. This will take place at the Microsoft Theater located across the street from the Los Angeles Convention Center. So, yeah, that's yet one more date for you to mark on to your calendar and mine. I'll be very curious to see exactly what they have in store for us. Got to make sure I have that day off of work. Do you have any theories, any guesses? PlayStation 5. At the Microsoft press oh, conference? You know what? I, I just, you know what? No, 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 no. My bad. I just got to thinking about all the E3. I'm sorry. And I, and I was wrapping my head around. Yeah, just go ahead, Russ. <laughs> just go ahead. I'm just going to stay right here. Move along. Okay. Move along. Okay. So I have a little bit of more Microsoft news for you. They also have announced new monthly streaming show inside Xbox, is what I believe is what it's called. Alex Osborne reports Microsoft has announced that this weekend it will premiere a new monthly live show called Inside Xbox. Xbox Director of Programming Tina Summerford shared the news on Xbox Wire. Inside Xbox will debut this Saturday, March 10th at 12 p.m. Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. UK Time, and March 11th at 7 a.m. Australian Time with a behind-the-scenes look of sea at Sea of Thieves. Rare will discuss the core design concept of Sea of Thieves as well as how player feedback from the closed beta helped shape the game. The studio will also cover what players can expect from the game when it launches on March 20th. Another March 20th date. Bust out the calendar, Steve. You might as well just keep it a handy dip for you. And offer a tease at what lies ahead in terms of post-launch content. Inside Xbox will be available for streaming via YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Mixer. The host of Inside Xbox will include Larry Erb from uh, Major Nelson, you know. Larry Erb from Major Nelson? Yeah, do you like how I did a little <laughs> reversal on that? <laughs> Jeff Rubenstein, Alex Herbert, Lydia Ellery, and more. So, yeah, I, I actually listen to their podcast, the Major Nelson Radio. They've always got some, some fun little 
tidbits. Tidbits and nuggets of news. Parcels. As it comes from the Microsoft camp. Now, <clears throat> I actually have to uh, lower the music for this one, Steve. Because this next one in particular, it, it involves me having to show you something. Oh, so you boy. have to give me just a moment while I cue it up. <clears throat> it sounds like one of your nostrils was clogged. Ah, oh I'll just my. make noises over here. I'll fill the time while you're clicking away. Steve, right. <clears throat> I'll give you a little bit of a setup for this while I'm looking for it. You see, this particular trailer that I want to show you has to do with Soul Calibur 6. Mm-hmm. Now, in the past, Steve. Yes, Russ. You do remember that, like, certain releases of Soul Calibur would have special guest characters, right? Yes, Ross. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wasn't there, like, Darth Vader and Yoda in the, one, of the, the, one of the download packs? Right you are, Steve. <clears throat> so, uh, <laughs> what was that, right? <laughs> so, I have the current character that's going to guest star in Soul Calibur 6 right here for you, Steve. Why don't you take a little look at that? Oh, uh, oh okay. Had to show it, yeah. It's a lot of sound effects, Russ. Uh, crap like this. Exactly why I hate portals. Oh, jeez. Sound familiar, Steve? Oh, yeah. Come on. Let's do this. Challenged a Witcher. Must have had a death wish. <laughs> oh, yes. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely picked that up just for that and that reason only. Uh, <laughs> but it looks like when they started fighting there that that his sword movements looked pretty standard. They didn't look really that spectacular. Although when he still when he started using his spells and whatnot, that looked cool. But they kept on going back to the same pose that he does when his sword is drawn. Mm -hmm. But all the other kind of slashing looked a little bit standard. So I'm hoping, you know, I hope they'll do something more. I have a feeling they're probably going to emulate a lot from the game itself. Yeah. I think that CD Projekt Red will be very involved in that because that is their crown jewel. Oh, yeah, of course. And honestly, they're, they're going to do a great job. I, I think that every other guest character they've had, whether it was Yoda or Spawn or Darth Vader, like what you were mentioning, or even um, there was a Tekken player for the PlayStation they also had Link for the GameCube hmm, way back in the day. That's right. I think they actually had separate characters. They had this big uh, download pack for, depending on which system you had, you'd get different characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it, uh, I've always loved that. And this this one, I was like really excited to show I you. because I goosebumps. I, I know you were like basically lukewarm about Soul Calibur 6. How like you're yeah, not into fighting right. games. You like the first Soul Calibur. I think you like the first two. You yeah, yeah. You definitely like the first one. Right. Uh, but I, I was curious to find out whether or not that would cause you to go out and buy the game. I uh, definitely would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, it's cool that they had the uh, some of the music from the game. It sounds like they have the same voice actor, which is awesome. Oh, that was yeah, that was totally the yeah, same voice yeah, actor. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I was I was thinking at first. I wonder if he's going to use his steel sword and his silver sword because he has two. Maybe he would use two, although he never did in the uh, in the in the Witcher game. So. 
uh, you know, kind of wouldn't make sense for him to use two swords. But who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll, he'll. You know, they're going to totally have some. <laughs> oh, even if it was like a special move of sorts, like yeah. it would be a waste to only have him use the one sword, especially because he's known for using both swords. Well, so. not to mention he can augment different stuff in each sword. So that could give him different abilities. Right, right. Get ultimate nerd on your right now, Rush. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that, I'm glad I have something to get Steve all hot and bothered. Like the Avengers one, he's like playing it cool and I show him the Witcher one. Now yeah, look at him. He's all grin. He's all teethy over did, here. <laughs> toothy. Did you recognize the uh the battleground there, Ron? Yeah. Uh, That's the, his the fighting uh, arena. I don't remember what it's called, but it's like the training. It's like the area that yeah, you start out in, in Witcher Three. The beginning of the game. That's right. Ron. What's it called? Oh, uh, good grief. I can <laughs> see it, but I can't pronounce it. I don't know. Oh man! Now some other little uh, morsels for you. Let's see. Just just to make it official, Bandai Namco and CD Projekt Red have confirmed that Geralt of Rivia will appear as a guest character in Soul Calibur VI. Geralt will be voiced by the original voice actor. There ah. you go. Uh, his name is Doug Cockle, and brings with him a. Oh, here you go, Steve. A. Uh, okay. Now correct me if I mispronounce <clears> this. <throat> is yes. it? Kermorin, Kermorin, that's Kermorin. where it is. Yeah, Kermorin. Stage to fight across. So um, the soundtrack for the stage will be the uh, Hunt or Be Hunted. There you go. From The Witcher 3. Yeah. So, I mean, they're doing everything right. They're, de they're definitely paying homage to the character. I like to see this kind of stuff because it, the same thing happened with Forza Horizon 3 where they go, hey, you know what? You want to drive the Halo Warthog, you know, jumping around all in these dunes and yeah. rainforest stuff? Here you go. Let's celebrate Halo within Forza. Oh, you want to drive the the Quartz uh, convertible sedan from Final Fantasy? Sure. You know what? Let's just throw it in there. Why not? You know, mm -hmm. I, I just like that celebratory. We know that some other games are cool. We want to incorporate that in our game too. We want you to have fun with both games and let's just celebrate it. I think that's awesome. I think it's it's the beginning of hopefully some really cool things to come in terms of cross platform functionality. Yeah. Not only that, but but have it bump farther into more of the cross console play. So like if you have a game that is available for both the Xbox and the PlayStation, you should be able to play online with players who, you know, regardless of which console they own, you should still be able to play against them on multiplayer. Didn't they do that recently with Fortnite? Yeah, I think Fortnite makes it available for that. Also, there's a, oh, I cannot believe it. I'm totally spacing on, I, I there's a car game oh. that, that does it. It was, it was actually one of the first games to actually have cross-platform support. Oh my gosh, it's like the little dinky cars where you're, you're bouncing like the huge soccer ball and you're trying to make goals. Oh, it's like Rocket League. I think. Rocket yeah. League, thank you. Thank you so much for that, Jared. Yeah. I think I actually posted that on our Facebook and I'm not too much stake in there, now, the next little trailer I have for you here. Boom. A lot of sound effects. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. That, that was kind of a lousy teaser. It just basically showed Laura jumping and falling and some backgrounds and sunsets. It was an announcement trailer. So mm -hmm. I think that they're going to be saving like the big official trailer for E3, mm -hmm. which makes sense. But the nice thing is, is that they've already come out with a release date, mm -hmm. September 14th. That's not soon after E3. Right? And I've got to tell you, Steve, I'm actually really happy about that just because... Just last year, I was able to catch up with my Tomb Raider experience. I beat Rise of the Tomb Raider. So the the current trajectory of what they're doing with Laura and just the gameplay mechanics and whatnot, I've been just loving. I think it's, it's just it's fantastic. Current trajectory of the bow and arrow shooting. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> Actually, that reminds me. Would you be interested in borrowing Rise of the Tomb Raider? No. No. Well, that's... Make a pass on that, Russ. Well, why not, Steve? Well, I, uh, I haven't even borrowed Halo 5 from you yet, okay? And I, I watched you play Rise of the Tomb Raider enough over here with you campfiring it out and making arrows and meat and me falling asleep on the couch and... <laughs> oh, I gotta go home. <laughs> Do you listeners see what I have to put up with over here? Jeez. All right, well, let's... Uh, 
get into some movie news. This one actually is quite telling. John Williams to quit composing for Star Wars after episode nine. I'm out of here. You're gonna you're gonna edit my music. My music, I'm out. That's that's probably what happened. Speaking to radio station KUSC via NME, Williams explained that he'll stop composing for the series with the next installment, ending a 42-year association with the series. Quote, we know J.J. Abrams is preparing Star Wars Episode Nine. now that I will hopefully do next year for him, Williams said. And he continued, quote, I look forward to it. It will round out a series of nine that will be quite enough for me. So... There's your end quote. Uh, yeah, it's just amazing to me. I'm, I'm, not having John Williams be a part of Star Wars is like not having salt with pepper. It's like you, exactly. you have got to have that together. And yeah. I uh, wonder if he got a contract for the Avengers. Hey, I, uh, hey Johnny, what do you say? Huh? You want to make sure you're out of Star Wars? You want to come on the Avengers side? Johnny, Johnny. You saw how The Last Jedi was. <laughs> Catastrophe, okay? Hey, hey, we, we both know where this goes. You, <laughs> you, you know you want to compose for the superheroes. <laughs> hey, you want to take this contract or do you want to sleep with the fishes? I, I, I have no idea why Hollywood executives <laughs> and producers suddenly sound like the Italian mob, but whatever. Uh, but no, I was absolutely just... My eyeballs grew as wide as dinner plates when I read that. But at the same time, I had the exact same reaction as you did. And I actually talked to a couple of friends who also, that was their go-to, was they, they knew about Rion Johnson's editing of, of the music and just how that wasn't like, traditionally speaking, how a composer works. Yeah, when you told me that earlier, my eyes like went boom. Yeah, I mean, like, when that doesn't happen. Are you kidding me? That does not happen. Yeah. Black Panther cracks top 10 highest grossing domestic movies of all time. Jonathan Dornbush reports with Black Panther crossing the $500 million mark at the domestic box office, it joins a selected group of films to push past that milestone. And actually, I do believe that that number is higher. So essentially, I was able to get a list of, of the different movies here. And essentially, this is, I think this is now actually out of date, but the top 10 films were Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Avatar, Titanic, Jurassic World, Marvel's The Avengers, Star Wars, The Last Jedi, The Dark Knight, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and then Black Panther, and then Beauty and the Beast. However, if memory serves, I do believe that that Black Panther has now jumped up ahead to, I do believe it's right underneath Star Wars, The Force Awakens. It's made that much money. Well, if you read any of the comments on Twitter, there's people that are seeing it three, four, and five times. I mean, it's people are still seeing the movie now. Yeah. So if it hasn't grown beyond that, what you're reading, it will be by the time people hear this. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very curious to see how the, the overall projection goes. I think I was reading somewhere about how they are... Tra- like projecting that it could make as much as something like 650 million just domestically. And I know it's, it's, I think it's crossed the $1 billion mark internationally. Yeah. So it's doing just amazingly well and it should, it's a good movie. House of cards has a final season, final season. Yes. In which, uh, they have released a teaser that hails a powerful new chief. House of Cards fifth season ended with Claire Underwood taking power. Oh, think, oh great. Oh, oh, great. Thank oh. you. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I just Steve. said I hadn't finished it yet. I apologize. Oh, all this work, I, I don't want to hurt the... I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, and you're spoiling it for me. I am terribly sorry, Steve. I lay myself before the court. Oh, the mercy of the court. But like you wouldn't know. I was guessing, but now it's definitely spoiled. I could have told you that was going to happen uh, from the end of season four, for crying out loud. Still don't want to be told about it. I'm sorry, Steve. I'm sorry. Can you ever forgive me? I guess. Well. <laughs> Do I have a choice? <laughs> 
Well, if for nothing else, at least I saved you from watching the teaser trailer because in the teaser trailer, it shows her there. Large, well, not really large, figuratively speaking, large and in charge, no pun intended. I'm just, whatever. She's, yeah, yeah. Moving on, Russ. I'm so sorry, Steve. Dig yourself out of that one. <laughs> Why is it every time I try and shovel out water on this boat, more water gets back in? <laughs> Last but not least, and I, I'm honestly thinking of shanghaiing you to this, AMC Theaters to host a 31-hour Avengers movie marathon. Oh. So what they're going to do, Steve, is leading up to the opening night of the Avengers Infinity War, they will have a special event where you get to watch every single Marvel Cinematic Universe movie that leads up to Avengers Infinity War. That will basically take 1.5 days of nonstop watching. We could do it, Steve. Oh my gosh, I can just imagine the headache I would have after that. What do you say, Steve? Come on. I mean, I'm I'm into it, but I'm not into it at the same time. <laughs> Come on, Steve. I need well, to know. I'm I'm purchasing tickets. Uh, I'm I'm hungry again. I don't know if I can eat a sixth hot dog. But I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it after the show. How about a stuffed pretzel? I don't know. I'm thinking that it might be worth our time just, just to say that we did it. Just look back and be like, you know what? That was insane. And uh, we went ahead and tackled it. Well, that actually about wraps up this particular episode. As I mentioned earlier, we want to be able to cut this. Well, it's not even really technically cutting it all that short. We just didn't want to go for too long. So we decided to punt the topic of the day to next week's program. So we want to wish every, each and every one of you a happy St. Patrick's Day. Be sure to check out patreon.com slash joygasm and subscribe to get the most out of the show. Also, you can follow us on social media and YouTube. Just do a search for Joygasm TV. In addition to iTunes and Android, you can listen to our podcast on TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, and SoundCloud.com slash joygasm TV. Last but not least, do a search for Joygasm TV on Twitch to see us stream our gaming adventures live, which, by the way, I have to apologize. Yeah, I was waiting for that. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm filled with apologies during the last part of this program here. Uh, I had to fly to Alabama to do some video production work. And as a result, I was not present. I was, I was out of the office, so to speak, in order to play with my dear old brother this past Wednesday. So uh, I do not have any plans to go anywhere except on my couch and play some Overwatch Next Wednesday at 9.30 Central Time. So, uh, anyway. Until next time, you have yourself a good day. <laughs> I'm fairly well. <laughs>